Today's reading is from Genesis, chapter 45, verses 3 to 11 and 15. You can find it on page 39 in the Old Testament, in your pew Bibles. Many years after being sold into slavery by his jealous brothers, Joseph reveals himself to them. Now the second in command in Egypt, Joseph reassures his brothers that God has used their evil intentions for good to preserve life during a devastating famine, and Joseph forgives them. The reading begins on verse 3. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler all over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept with them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This reading is on page 56 in the New Testament. Jesus said, But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give, will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. That reading is the source of at least six platitudes that I can count that you could have found on plaques on the wall in my dear grandma's kitchen. Love your enemies, turn the other cheek, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, judge not lest you be judged, forgive and forget, Give and it will be given to you. These are principles that are widely accepted. But I have to say that there are things about these sayings that I just don't like and I have a hard time with, especially because of how they ring in our ears today. Turn the other cheek. Not always good advice, not always wise. Consider women who are being abused. The Me Too experience is too real for many of us. And this week's news about the summit on abuse by clergy. 
Just know. Report, run, get out, stop it, change. This reading is not justifying abuse. And as I think about the long path to racial justice in this country, forgive and forget doesn't cut it. Honesty, reckon, reckoning, confession, repentance, systemic change, these may be ways forward to healing. So what does Jesus mean by these words, and why does anybody live or want to live this way? Well, for some, today's reading contains a lot of rules. This is just the way you live. Follow these rules and it'll all be good. Just do it. Others hear Jesus' words as a way to become a better disciple. I love people more than you do. I forgive all the people nobody else will tolerate. I must be pretty good. Some of us live this way in order to be blessed now. We heard this all the time from prosperity gospel preachers decades ago and from some TV personalities today. The belief among American Christians that if you just give your money to God, God will bless you with more money. And finally, many of us are motivated to live this way because we believe we'll receive a reward in heaven after this life. If I just live this way on earth, then I will be rewarded by God and I will go up there to heaven. And these ideas make sense, except for the fact that this is exactly what Jesus tells us not to do. <laughs> don't do things expecting something in return, he says. You don't find that one on too many plaques on a wall, right? It's easy to hear today's reading as one long list of rules that if you just keep them, lead to big rewards and big deals with God. But if you try living this way, and I'm sure all of us in this room have, a couple of things start to happen. The first thing is that you can start to get pretty self-righteous and get a big head. This is what happened to Joseph in the part of the story before what Marianne read today. Joseph had big dreams and not much humility. When he told his family that they would end up bowing down to him in the future, his 11 brothers were not happy. They throw, threw Joseph in a pit, sold him, he was sold again, and they told their father he'd been killed by goats. Well, you heard the rest of the story in this reading. And yes, you should go see Joseph when it's performing at the Paramount in April. Part of the Joseph story provides a picture of what happens when we think we're so much better than others and start getting self-righteous and judging other people. I love the way author, researcher, and storyteller Brene Brown discovered her own self-righteousness when she realized she was getting pretty judgy and seeing people either as sewer rats or scofflaws. Her image of seeing people as sewer rats came from the experience of having to share a room at a conference with a woman who, when she met her, was eating this great big cinnamon roll with icing falling all over it. And she took her fingers covered with icing and wiped them on the love seat in the hotel room. And then she went out on the balcony in a no smoking hotel and started smoking. And Brene tells of how she was horrified by the woman's habits and her behavior that were breaking all of her rules of decency. The other people she said bother her were scofflaws. It's an old term for people who scoff at the law and the rules of society and mock other people who abide by them. Later, Brene says she noticed how often she was self-righteous and judging people for any little reason, what they wore, what they said, what they did. Judging came very easily. Now, I don't know what it's like for you, but I find it pretty easy to get self-righteous and not love others or bless or forgive or do good to people I would rather judge as sewer rats or scofflaws. Anybody with me on that? It's tough. For me, these are people who run a red light on division. They're people who are on my tail on I-94. For somebody with my personality type, I like people to follow the rules and the laws. I like to be organized. I thrive on order. 
I like having a place for everything, whether in the refrigerator or the dishwasher or my closet. <laughs> Judging others comes very naturally to my heart. But whatever your stripes, it's easy to see how hard it is to live out these principles. We might think, yeah, I've got this. Look at that poor guy. Pathetic, right? But then the words come back to bite you and you realize the judging in your heart and go, uh-oh, do not judge, do not condemn, do not forgive. And this is the place where Brene Brown finally lands, that vulnerable place of forgiveness and grace for others and for yourself. Because we have to confess, I'm not loving enough, not kind enough, not forgiving enough. I can't do what this word would require me to do to gain some reward or win some holiness competition. Like the catechism says, I believe that I cannot by my own understanding or effort believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. This is what it means to be human. And that's okay. That's okay because that's who we are. This reading is part of the longer story that we heard last week from the Sermon on the Plain, in which Jesus comes to us where we all are on the same level, the same plane. And as soon as we start to get a big head and think we are better than others or that we'll earn God's blessings, Jesus reminds us that we're all on a level playing field. The good news of this story is that Jesus isn't giving us some new set of commandments and rules that we have no hope of bargaining for or fulfilling. He is describing what God's reign looks like when it's lived out in the world and we begin to treat one another the way God has treated us. God the Most High is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. We live by the endless cycle of rules that says love deserves love, hate deserves hate, forgive only those who have forgiven you, do good only to those you know are going to give back to you good. The only way to stop that cycle, that thinking of if I do this, then I will get that, is to begin to do something else, to begin thinking and living in a new way. And it is in Jesus Christ that we discover what this different way of being looks like. Because Jesus is the one who himself turned the other cheek, who didn't leave us in our brokenness, didn't judge our sin, but who stretched out his arms on the cross and prayed, Father, forgive them. And then said to the ones who had denied him and run in fear, peace be with you. When you hear today's words spoken by the one who went to the cross, they sound different. Not as endless rules that leave you hopeless, but a vision, a description of what it looks like when God's reign is lived out in the world and we regard others the way God has regarded us and discover the joy of living boldly in love, doing good, connecting, forgiving, showing mercy, and giving. Back at the beginning, people said of the early followers of Jesus, there's something different about these people. See how they love one another. Our culture tells us, look out for yourself first. Measure your worth by your stuff. We at Bethlehem have a vision of living in a new way for the sake of a new community that God is bringing about even now. It begins in baptism, as it begins for Liv and Benjamin in just a moment. It is the way of Jesus that sees how every person, as we sang, bears the image of God's face. It is the way we want to share with our children and our youth. And it is the only way that changes the world. Amen. Amen.